Okay, these three eight plates, they get a little warm when you weld on them continuous. So I sometimes like to take a little break before I put that cap pass on. I don't like it to get cold, but I like to be able to hold my hand about a half inch away and be comfortable, not feel a lot of heat. So, uh, you know, a couple hundred degrees uh, inner pass temperature is pretty good. It starts getting 500 degrees and you feel the heat way back here, Same, especially on the vertical weld where you're weaving. Uh, it's time to let it cool down a little before you cap. This is, this is ready to go, so we're going to do this one now. Uh, I'm going to run that first bead where I save this little edge on this side. So I'm going to run that one first, I'm going to run the next one right next to it, and the next one right next to that. Three quick stringers, that's all I need. I want to be about a sixteenth above flush, that's optimum. Flush is minimum, in, in other words, if the weld is exactly even with the plate, that's the minimum. You don't want to be below, and you don't want to be more than an eighth above. So I want to try and keep it right about there. About a sixteenth above. Slack comes off real easy right now. Next bead is going to go right next to that bead. I'm going to center my rod, my electrode, right over the toe of that weld. I want to cover that previous weld I just made about halfway. Try to keep this as straight and neat as I can. second to cool. Some welders will weave this. They'll weave the second pass and weave the third pass and that's acceptable. The code book doesn't specify weaves or stringers. Some contractors will specify stringers. It's up to the welder. In uh, most cases it's up to the welder his technique he uses. I, I choose the stringers because I can go all the way down without a restart. Restarts are tough up there. When you're weaving I might have two restarts on that cap pass. Always have to have your flashlight. When you go to take a test, bring a flashlight with you. A good wire brush, good chipping hammer. Sometimes good idea to bring your own electrode holder. When you go to testing facilities, these are sometimes worn out and they won't hold an electrode properly, or they're really big and heavy. I did all right for a blind guy. All right, one more pass should do it. Uh, what I'm gonna do on this last pass is I'm going to cover the, the pass I just made halfway. So I'm going to stick the electrode right on the toe of the weld, drag it right along and watch that I'm covering about half of the bead. I don't want crevices in between the beads. I want to cover them so it's pretty smooth across the face of the weld. One of the toughest parts of passing one of these tests is passing the visual inspection afterwards. I don't have my inspection tools with me here today, but what I'm looking for is for that plate to be filled up at least flush, no more than an eighth above flush, want the welds to be tied in pretty good, no deep crevices, no undercuts over a 32nd of an inch. 
Um, visual's a tough part. More people fail the visual on this than, than the actual bend test. Never cool your plates in water. Allow them to cool slowly in still air. Possible you could, uh, in some cases, harden that steel a little bit by throwing it in the bucket of water. So just let it cool down naturally. Okay, there's a number of ways they can evaluate this test. It could be x-rayed, it could be ultrasound tested. Uh, the most common test is a, called destructive testing, and that would be saw some coupons out of here, and they come from a specific place, like I've mentioned earlier, inch from the center, and we could take an inch and a half coupon out here, inch and a half coupon out of this side, and grind all of that weld off, grind the backup strips off, polish the coupon, and bend it into a U. We have a special bending fixture that has a specific size, and when you bend that material, if there's anything in there other than weld, slag inclusions from the, the slag that I was chipping off, if I don't place my beads right, I trap slag. If there's anything in there um, uh, more than a 1 8 rip, tear, or flaw, I fail. Um, you're allowed up to 3 8 accumulated, but uh, you really like to have nothing in there. I like, to, I like it to bend and uh, look really nice and clean. If you place your beads right, don't trap slag. Make sure your beads are shaped right, uh, flat, to slightly convex, not too convex. Uh, make sure you leave room to get your next electrode in there so you don't trap slag back behind the, the weld. You, you should have no problem passing this test. I also make sure I set up for my cap pass when I weld. I make sure I leave that little bit of a line there so I can see where I'm going. It's real important to be able to see where you're going. To learn more about our welding training programs, visit our website at lincolnelectric.com. <laughs>